You may be seated. On behalf of the families, thank you for coming this afternoon to share in this memorial service for Kalisha Marie Archer. It's difficult to put into words the sadness and loss that so many of us feel. And I pray that God gives us grace and strength as we remember this precious child of God today. I know that we will miss her, but I also know and trust that she has found rest and peace in the arms of her Savior. Psalm 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Merciful, loving Heavenly Father, come bring your comfort and peace to our minds, our bodies, and souls. May your gentle spirit come fill this place with your comfort, your rest, your peace, as we look to you in our time of sorrow and sadness. I pray that the many great memories of Kalisha will fill our minds and that our spirits will be lifted by such thoughts and in knowing that she is now with you, her Lord and Savior. Thank you that she is yours, and thank you for blessing us through her in these seemingly short years that she has been a part of our lives. Thank you for her family, her husband and his family, and the love that they have for her. And I pray that you especially touch them with your healing comfort and mercy today. Touch them with your heavenly peace, restore our spirits, and bring rest to our minds and bodies. For this we pray in Christ's name. Amen. All right, we're going to sing the song Freely, Freely. God forgave my sin in Jesus' name, I've been born again. In Jesus' name, and in Jesus' name, I come to you to share his love as he told me to. He said freely, freely you have received, freely, freely give. Go in my name and because you Okay, there must be another verse happening there, or no? Sorry. All power is given in Jesus' name on earth and heaven in Jesus' name and in Jesus' name I call. share his power as he told me to. He said, 
freely, freely you have received. Freely, freely give. Go in my name and be Good afternoon. Our names are John and Grace Weeb, and we have the privilege of being the friends of Kalisha's and as well as her husband Thomas and the rest of their family. Thomas and Kalisha's family have asked us to share a tribute to the life of Kalisha Marie Archer. Kalisha Marie Archer, dearly loved by her, hum ugh, by her husband Thomas, passed away on August 18th, 2023. She was the firstborn of Neil and Lana Birch, on April 4th, 1987, and her big sister and best friends to Chancellor and Caitlin. Neil and Lana were living in an apartment in Drumheller <laughs> prior to Kalisha's birth, and while Lana was still in the hospital with Kalisha, Neil bought a house trailer and moved into it on the family farm. Kalisha came home from the hospital to the farm and enjoyed growing up there, learning about cattle and as well as the grain farming. She was involved with 4-H for about nine years and excelled at public speaking, going to provincials for competitions. Kalisha was involved in many aspects of the farm from a young age. Kalisha remembers to going to check crops with her dad and Marty Metzger and somehow ended up with Peter Milkshakes on the way home, even though they're not anywhere close to there. Chance, Chance recalls Kalisha was always the peacemaker between the three of them. Their family went on numerous road trips when they were younger and Kalisha always needed to sit in the middle so the other two wouldn't fight. When Kalisha got her driver's license, she enjoyed the freedom of being off the farm and doing activities with her friends. One day, Neil was driving Kalisha's car and was trying to do a burnout in it. Kalisha says, oh, you have to hit the traction, oh wait, when she just realized she had told on herself after pointing out the traction control button. Kalisha also enjoyed a close relationship with many of her cousins who have fond, fond memories of their visits to the farm, driving dirt bikes, riding in machinery, and exploring the coulee to the north of the Birch Farm. Kalisha continued to remain close with her cousins and greatly enjoyed their return visits to the farm. Kalisha attended K4 at Acme Christian Academy and K5 in Carbon. She was reading by the time she finished K5. Kalisha was homeschooled grades 1 through 12, then attended Cape and Ray Harbor Bible School and Olds College, taking egg finance management. Kalisha grew up going to summer camp at Camp Caroline and worked there for a few summers after graduating. Kalisha learned how to play the bass guitar and the piano as a child. She excelled at piano and won several ribbons for sight reading at local music festivals. She attended Zion Baptist Church growing up and started playing piano there in 2000 at the age of 12. She continued to play the piano in church for many years after she moved back to the Carbon area. She also served as treasurer for the ladies group at Zion from 2018 to 2023. I first met Kalisha when she and Chance and Caitlin began spending time with my younger, younger siblings who were also homeschooling. Kalisha and my sister Rose spent a lot of time together. Rose has fond memories of going to rock concerts with Kalisha as well as Harvest Moon, which is a Christian alternative rock festival. They watched countless movies together as well as skiing, skating, drama, and swimming activities with other homeschoolers. Rose recalls that Kalisha was the first friend she had that she could talk to about other things other than boys, and that Kalisha was very supportive of Rose when she was struggling. Kalisha enjoyed reading sci-fi and fantasy novels and would often reread her favorite books multiple times. She also enjoyed video games and board games. In recent years, she had also taken up cross-stitching. In Kalisha's own words, 
my nerd side is constantly at war with my farmer side, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> While we weren't super close at that time due to age differences that meant a lot more back then, we still influenced each other. She is the reason I have seen every single Stargate episode, and <laughs> I learned many years later that I first introduced her to the diverse world of music she enjoyed with an eclectic mix CD I made for her back in the day. Who knew Tupac could bring two people together? <laughs> Kalisha had many jobs over her short life that just seemed to build on top of each other. Each one was a stepping stone to the next one. She started off as a grain cart driver for three harvest seasons on Don Joe Farms and was a summer student for the village of Carbon. After moving into the city, she did data entry at the Calgary Sun worked at Costco as front end, and then moved to the tire shop side. Caitlin recalls that Kalisha jumped at every opportunity to cross train to a different department while working at Costco and was always willing to learn a new skill. After deciding the city wasn't for her, she moved to Crossfield where she started working at Agro Plow building deep rippers. And in the growing season, she worked for Green Tech, spraying weeds at acreages, walking trails, and community parks. When she lived in Airdrie, she was blessed with landlords Amanda and Steve, who were also friends who helped her through a difficult period in her life. When she moved to Crossfield, she was able to have pets again and rescued two cats, Tex and Church. Kalisha's bond with them was formed, forged as she found that through helping them to thrive, she was able to move forward and become stronger. After reflection of what she truly wanted, Kalisha realized that her heart had always been on the farm and she took up the challenge. In 2013, Kalisha made the decision to go to college as she had always hoped to do and applied at Old College in the Agricultural Finance Management Program. She enjoyed the challenge of learning more about agriculture and making new friends. It was during that time she was introduced to Thomas Archer in 2015. They met through a mutual friendship with Will and Angela, and after a couple dates, their dating relationship grew. Thomas proposed to Kalisha at Swalwell Dam on July 21st, 2016. He had designed the rings and they hadn't come in yet, but he couldn't wait. In his proposal, he gave her an IOU for the ring, and thankfully the rings came before they were married a month later. After college, Kalisha returned to the family farm by Carbon, and the following summer, Kalisha and Thomas got married. They lived in a rental near Zion Baptist Church until they were able to move into their own home on the Birch family farm in the fall of 2019. During her time living and working on the farm, Kalisha was an advocate for farm culture and served on the board of Alberta Pulse Growers from 2019 to 21. Living on a multi-generational farm was very important to Kalisha. Her family was, integral, was an integral part of her life, spending time together, not only working on the farm, but also playing. Whether it was going snowmobiling in Yellowstone or helping her dad restore the John Deere 80 for her grandpa, Kalisha enjoyed spending time with her family. She also enjoyed the motorbike trips, roller coasters and trips to the dunes. Tractor pulls were also a family affair with multiple tractors to drive. This made for a fun competition to see who could get the most out of each tractor. The Archer family also became very important to Kalisha. She often told stories about spending time with them, and I felt like I knew most of them before I even met them. She enjoyed the tri family trips out west with them at Thanksgiving and to get their giant Christmas tree. Um, her sister-in-laws were also her friends, and I know she knew how special that was. Thomas's family was also her family. She loved them and felt blessed to be living life with them. She loved spending time with her niece and nephew, Veronica and Emmett, and I know they both, both miss their Auntie Kay. Her favorite part of supper at the Archers was playing games with Veronica and Emmett so she didn't have to talk politics with the other adults. John and I began spending more and more time with Thomas and Kalisha about six years ago. It was such a blessing to spend time with a couple we had so much in common with and who were so easy to be around. The four of us would often go on trips together, watch movies, and go to tractor pulls. 
Our anniversary is close to theirs, so we would often double date to celebrate. This morning, Kalisha was laid to rest in the cemetery at Zion Baptist Church, surrounded by the family that had predeceased her, her paternal grandparents, Adam and Frida. As we stood there surrounding her final resting place, singing songs of worship to a powerful and loving God, our hearts are heavy with the sorrow we feel for a life that was cut too short. There is no way to know everything that Kalisha was battling, but there, but there are some things we can know for certain. We know that God is a great and powerful God who loves his people. He knows the depths of his love for us because he tells us plainly in his word. John 3, 16 to 18 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whom, whom, whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. He who believes in him is not judged. He who does not believe has been judged already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Kalisha made this decision at the age of five and chose to be baptized as a young teenager. God's desire is that all people would believe in him. His heart is broken by our disbelief, and he seeks for us to return to him and believe that he is the one true God. Another thing we know for certain, that God is our refuge. Psalm 46, 1 to 7 speaks of this and might be and of the might and the power of our God and his desire to protect us. We pray that these words will be a comfort and a reminder to all of us. God is our refuge and strength and a very ready help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth shakes and the mountains slip into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains quake at its swelling pride. How, how deep the Father's love for us. <clears throat> Jesus Christ, his death and 
and resurrection. Why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer, but this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom. Let's all stand as we sing the song, Because He Lives. I don't know if you noticed, but we're <clears throat> singing some old hymns. And you know, the beautiful, beautiful thing about God's love for us, and for, uh, no matter, when, when I look out at this, this crowd, there's every, every age represented here. And that's the beautiful thing. And, and people like Kalisha, they had time for everyone. And I'm an, I'm an old guy, but, you know. Anyways, it's just, it's just something beautiful about the family of God. And as we sing this song, Because He Lived. God sent his son, they called him Jesus, he came to love, heal and forgive, he bled and died. Because he lives, how sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel a pride and joy he gives, but greater still. child can face uncertain days because he lives because he lives I can face tomorrow because he Is that the, is that all the verses you got there? All right. Mm, okay, sorry. And then one day I'll cross that river. I'll fight life's fight. No war with pain. And then as death.
because he lives. Could you bring that chorus up again? We're going to sing it without the piano. Just because he lives. to be the bumpy part of the service because it's sort of a last minute thing but first off I just want to thank everybody for coming and we felt your prayers and your love people come to help us combine people just dropping food off filling our fridge three three fridges full and we're slowly getting through it and just thank you for all you've done whether you came and drove a combine or drove a truck or just came and hung out with us for a few hours or stopped in for five minutes. It was great. Continue coming. We love it. It just builds us. It's great. I don't know. Just, we just love hearing your stories about Kalisha, your memories. And we just welcome that anytime. And uh, these these hymns that were chosen, they were chosen because they were ones that Kalisha would choose quite frequently when she was playing for our church services. So. Yes, and then just thank you for, for Thomas for being a great husband and their family for accepting us into their family as well. It was just great, great, uh, just feeling everybody's love. Thank you. I remember uh, Kalisha when she was first born in the hospital, she had to go to Calgary to be born because she was there was having, mom was having some troubles and took her in there and I could never find that baby because uh, Kalisha, they were, she was born, could hold her head up and she was a little blue smurf and then they probably have rules against it now but she would literally just walk around the whole hospital in the foothills, it might be 20 minutes before I could find her, but anyways. We just thank God for the gift of Kalisha in our lives. Thank you. Thank you guys. They are strong. I know a couple of days ago, Neil said I might come up and say a few words, and then he told me, probably just go up for a minute and cry and then sit down. And I said, that's what I'm doing for my message, so now I'll have to change it. <laughs> I saw what John and Grace did, and I thought I should have my wife up here once in a while, too, just to tag off. Well, I've known Kalisha for the past almost 18 years, pretty much half of her life. And in the sadness and the tragedy, it is a very difficult message for me to do. But there's also a story to be told about a young girl who came to Christ about joys and pains, ups and downs, about mental awareness, about good times, about struggle, about life's difficulties, about certainties and uncertainties, and about the love of God for her, for you, for me. And that's the story that she would want told. For it's also one of the passages she had highlighted in her Bible that John read earlier, and Lon also had passed on to me. My memories of Kalisha are of her smile, her caring look, sense of kindness as we would talk over the years, her gentle laugh, and her love for cats, which I'm guessing she got from her grandpa, Adam, and very much her love for music and the joy that she seemed to find and peace when she would play the piano at church for so many years. And over the past number of years, she would play every second and fourth Sunday if it worked out. And as Lana mentioned, those were some of her favorites to do. And 
It was always a huge blessing to me, to our church family. It was a break from me playing piano so I could play guitar and sing up front. And I'm sure a big break for the church so they didn't have to hear me play week after week. But it was a special blessing just to watch and listen to her play. And she seemed to find a special peace when doing so. And I'm sure that that heartfelt melody was heard in heaven. So a lot of the conversations over the years and texting that revolved around hymns and choruses, what we would be playing, if she'd be around for the next week to play, or if something else was happening in their lives, and how she was feeling, especially during weather changes. And so I got to know lots of these hymns and choruses she liked because most of the time she would pick them out and we would do those on Sundays. And often they were deeper songs, softer, more contemplative words. And so I'll remember many of these songs as her songs. And I saw how she loved to play for her grandparents, Ab and Frida, in what feels like so many years ago, and when they would sing their special numbers. And they loved Kalisha's playing and loved to just have her play for them, as Adam once told me, as when they were planning a special. And it wasn't for sure that Kalisha was going to be there to do that, the song on the Sunday. And so I mentioned that if they needed me to play, and I could do so. And Adam said, well, maybe, but Kalisha knows how to do the songs the way that we do them. <laughs> and she just smiled at me and said that she just followed their lead. <laughs> but beyond the talk of songs, we talked a lot about migraines, because both of us shared in the suffering. And she would tell me some things that she was trying and medications she was using, and I would tell her what I was trying. Last couple of years, she tried one of these like ear piercings, I think on both sides of the ears in certain locations and earring studs that were put in and she said it helped at least for a while and she was saying, well, you should try that. <laughs> and I told her with the shaved head, I wasn't sure how it would look, a bald guy with big earrings and I might look like somebody trying to be a hipster path, pastor or somebody trying to relive his 30s. So we would laugh at times even about this shared affliction but I knew it was tough for her, and the pain of the migraines greatly impacted her life and affected her both physically and mentally, in addition to other health problems. And it's difficult to see that, let alone in someone so young. But some of my best, happiest memories are when she first met Thomas. And I remember a Facebook post about it being the happiest year of her life. And it was so evident in her smile, her laughter, and overall demeanor. And so some of those pictures, for me, some of those memories that I will treasure in my mind. But the reality is that many of us will go through various struggles, physically, mentally, emotionally. And that really is no different for those of us who are believers. And it's important to be aware of these issues and these struggles. I remember seeing this sign in a store a number of years ago. And the sign said this. Lost dog with three legs, blind in left eye, missing right ear, tail broken, and recently castrated. Answers to the name of Lucky. <laughs> and some days I'm sure we feel just as lucky. The passage that Lana had passed on to me is the one that John read earlier in John 3, 16 to 18. One that she had marked in her Bible, and I'm just going to read that again. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, and whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal love, life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. And it's a great passage, and most of us over the years have probably heard John 3.16, and it's a great passage because it also makes known a great truth of great hope. And maybe you've heard the message of God's love for the world before. Maybe you've heard the gospel message before. But I do want to make it clear today that even though we do believe the message and receive Christ into our lives, it does not mean that our lives will be perfect it does not mean that we will not face struggles and difficulties in this world, just like everyone else who is living here on planet Earth. Because the reality 
the truth is that we still struggle at times. We will falter, we will fail, we will sin. But thank God that does not change the promised outcome of eternal life. Thank God that we are saved by grace through faith and that will never be undone. Thank God that we begin by grace, we journey in grace, and we end in grace. Thank God that Jesus did not die for those who were perfect and strong and faultless, but he came for the lost, the sick, the weak, and those who need him. I've heard the expression over the years that religion is just a crutch, or people have said that Christianity is just a crutch. And I've thought at times when I've heard that, and I think, no, that's, that's not true. We should be lucky if it was just a crutch because it's a stretcher, it's a hospital bed, it's life support for those who are dying and realize that they need a savior. And the invitation is for all to come, as from that verse there, that it's God's love for the world, for those who are lost and dying, for those who feel and sense and see their need for something more. And the difference after accepting, receiving Christ into our lives by grace through faith is that we have someone who thereafter walks with us. We have someone who works in our life, and we have someone who helps us and comforts us. And so importantly, we also have that certain promise of eternal life. And that's the message of this first verse in this passage that she had highlighted. They shall not be perished, but have eternal life. Max Licato tells this story in his book, No Wonder They Call Him Savior. Longing to leave her poor Brazilian neighborhood, Christina wanted to see the world. Discontent with a home having only a pallet on the floor, a wash basin, and a wood-burning stove, she dreamed of a better life in the city. One morning she slipped away, breaking her mother's heart. Knowing what life on the streets would be life, like for a young, attractive daughter, Maria hurriedly packed to go find her. On the way to the bus stop, she entered a drugstore to get one last thing, pictures. She sat in the photograph booth, closed the curtain, and spent all she could on pictures of herself. With her purse full of small black and white photos, she boarded the next bus to Rio de Janeiro. Maria knew Christina had no way of earning money. She also knew that her daughter was too stubborn to give up. When pride meets hunger, a human will do things that before were unthinkable. Knowing this, Maria began her search. Bars, hotels, nightclubs, any place with the reputation for streetwalkers or prostitutes, she went to the mall. And at each place, she left her picture taped on a bathroom mirror, tacked to a hotel bulletin board, fastened to a corner phone booth. And on the back of each photo, she wrote a note. It wasn't too long before both the money and pictures ran out and Maria had to go home. The weary mother wept as the bus began its long journey back to her small village. It was a few weeks later that young Christina descended the hotel stairs. Her young face was tired. Her brown eyes no longer danced with youth but spoke of pain and fear. Her laughter was broken. Her dream had become a nightmare. A thousand times over, she had longed to trade these countless beds for a secure pallet. Yet the little village was, in too many ways, too far away. As she reached the bottom of the stairs, her eyes noticed a familiar face. She looked again, and there in the lobby mirror was a small picture of her mother. Christina's eyes burned and her throat tightened as she wandered across the room and removed the small photo. Written on the back was this compelling invitation. Whatever you have done, whatever have you become, it doesn't matter. Please come home. And she did. That's God's invitation to each of us. Wherever we are at in life, it's not too late to change. Whatever you become, whatever you have done, it doesn't matter. And so understand why that verse is so precious to her and to the families, because that's the gospel. Come as you are. Come in your need. Come in your weakness. We're not guaranteed to be strong after. And if you ever wonder, you step foot in a church and there's all going to be these people that are living way above you, you probably haven't realized all the people there and their own struggles. I cannot imagine going through the pain, the sorrow, the sadness of all this without having Christ in my life. And I know, yes, that do and many do and somehow they do, but 
as I feel the pain, as I see the pain in the eyes of her family, her husband, his family, it'd be overwhelming to have to walk this road alone. And I really think that it would feel impossible for me to do. So thank God for Christ in our lives. Thank God for the church family, for friends, for those who walk and stand with us and with his family in the midst of all this and comfort and help during these times. It's been said that the gospel is just one beggar telling another beggar where he found food. And that's the truth. It's not the promise of no pain, no grief, no struggles, but it's the promise that we will not have to walk that road alone. It's the promise that this journey for us will ultimately end with eternal life and that that is just the beginning. You probably remember a number of years back when Dr. Billy Graham passed on and these words of his were shared around a lot. He said, someday you will read or hear that Billy Graham is dead. Don't you believe a word of it? I shall be more alive than I am now. I will have just changed my address. I will have gone into the presence of God. A man by the name of John M. Drescher writes this. When John Owen, the great Puritan, lay on his deathbed, his secretary wrote in his name to a friend, I am still in the land of the living. Stop, said Owen. Change that and say it. I am yet in the land of the dying, but I hope soon to be in the land of the living. And that's the truth. We are all in the land of the dying, but one day we shall be in the land of the living. And that's the gospel message, life in Christ and through, through Christ. That's John 3.16, this verse that Kalisha highlights and cherished that her family and Thomas's family cherish, finding life in him, that you will not perish but have eternal life. And that's an open invitation. Again, it doesn't matter wherever you're at in your life, and it's not expected you come that you will ever be perfect because the only invitation that ever really matters is the one that comes from Jesus, who says that he alone is the one who comes and given himself for you, that you may have life in him. And he is diligently and unceasingly searching for you. Life will throw some imaginable things our way. None of us have any guarantees. There are no real certainties in life. And that's why this means so much to me and to the families for you to be able to know and to share in this hope and to know that there is something more, that this life is not the end of it. To embrace John 3.16 and know that you have life in him. And it's not difficult, it's for all, for God so loved the world and he loves you. And even though the unimaginable has happened and our lives are shaken, yet still we will stand and still we will carry on because we know that our Redeemer lives and that we too will live with him one day. That's the promise, eternal life in him. And so we may struggle, and yes, we will feel, deeply feel his pain, and we will grieve, and we will mourn, for yet our souls will find rest and peace in Christ and Christ alone. Horatio Spafford lived in the mid-1800s, and he was a wealthy Chicago lawyer, thriving legal practice, beautiful home, married, had four daughters and a son, faithful Christian who loved to study the Bible. And at the peak of his business success, his son tragically died. And not long after, the great Chicago fire of 1871 destroyed almost every real estate investment that Spafford had. In 1873, he scheduled a boat trip to Europe with his wife and daughters as a much-needed vacation to recover from all the tragedy. Some unexpected last-minute business came up, so Spafford sent his wife and daughters ahead of him while he remained in Chicago. Several days later, he received notice that the ship his family was on had suffered a collision and that all four of his daughters had drowned and only his wife had survived. With a heavy heart, Spafford boarded a boat that would take him to his grieving wife in England, and it was there on the, war on the boat that he penned these famous words, and the words that we sang earlier at Zion in a hymn that goes like this, When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrow like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. I was looking up the baptismal record for Kalisha in a book that we have for a church that's been passed along for decades since the beginning of the church, or close to there. 
And Kalisha was baptized back in July of 2002. So at 15 years of age, along with Cody and Sindel Askelstein, Alicia, Alicia Geek, and Rick and Bobby Kirby. And I had to think as I looked at that record that, wow, that must have been a special day. You know, I could imagine all the families and church congregation looking on and joining in the celebration. All of what it must have meant for these six people sharing in this special ceremony together as they expressed their faith and as they testified that they had received Christ into their lives and letting others know that they had found life in Christ. And in the same way, I can imagine how all those family members and church family members have gone before Kalisha celebrated her arrival in heaven, how they joined with her in thanksgiving for the truth of John 3.16, the promise of life in Christ. For we shall not perish, but have eternal life, and that promise is open to all to receive, to accept, and to find life in him. And as well as I think of that, I can imagine this heavenly scene as Adam and Frida are there before her and saying, okay, Kalisha can play for us now because she knows how we like to do these songs.